Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the PANAS scale. PANAS is an acronym standing for Positive and Negative Effect Schedule. It's a self-assessment questionnaire for measuring your emotions and feelings. The questionnaire basically consists of a list of emotional words and you score yourself for each word as to how intensely you feel that word or emotion. Now, the PANA scale is broken into two sections to measure what's called your positive effect and negative effect. Positive effect means your tendency to experience positive emotions, and the higher your positive effect, the more prevalent these positive emotions are. Negative effect is the opposite and refers to the level of negative emotions you might be experiencing. Now, it should come as no surprise that people whose positive effect outweighs their negative effect are more positive and resilient in general and better able to handle challenging circumstances in a more positive way. Now, before we jump in and look at the model a bit more closely, there are several versions of PANAS in existence that have been built upon the original model that you maybe should be aware of. So the first is PANAS C, and that's designed to measure the mood of school-aged children. Next, we have PANAS SF, SF standing for short form. So that's a short form and more concise version of the original model. Next, we have IPANAS SF. That's a short form version designed for international use. So meaning the words used have less room for ambiguity. And finally, we have PANAS X, uh, and that's an expanded version of the original model made up of 60 words. Now, despite containing 60 words, you can still undertake the assessment in less than 10 minutes. So the PANAS questionnaire consists of two lists of 10 words, and one list describes positive emotions and the other negative emotions. And the scale works simply by rating each stated emotion using a five point scale. Now, PANAS recognizes that you can feel both positive and negative emotions at the same time. So imagine feeling elated the moment your team has won a new exciting project, only the next moment to feel disappointed when your colleague is assigned to lead it. So that's an example of feeling positive and negative at the same time. Now, a highly positive affectivity score indicates strong positive feelings that lead to proactivity and enthusiasm. Conversely, a low positive effect score represents almost like a lethargy or a sadness. And then conversely, we can say a high negative affectivity score highlights negative emotions, and that can mean a state of distress or being disengaged, and a low negative effect score reflects a state of being very calm. Now, there's a few reasons you might want to use PANAS, and you might want to assess your own emotional state over time, or a group's emotional state over time, or, or some other individual's emotional state over time. So with that, let's jump in and take a look at the PANAS questionnaire. Now, I'm going to scroll down so you can see the whole questionnaire, but if you'd like to view this list and complete it for yourself, then you can find it in the companion article to this video, which I'll link to below the video. Now, as you can see in the image, the first 10 items ending here at active refer to positive emotions and the 10 items below that in the questionnaire refer to negative emotions. And you simply complete the questionnaire by scoring how you feel for each emotion. So for example, if we're looking at the term excited and you felt like this quite a bit, then you'd score yourself a four. Conversely, if you found yourself extremely nervous all of the time, then you'd circle five here to score yourself a five. So the best way to use PANAS is to perform the assessment over time so you can track trends. And if you want to do that, then here's a simple four-step process you can use that ensures you're measuring things consistently over time. So step one is to select a time interval. And this means being deliberate about how frequently you're going to take the assessment. It could be weekly, monthly, even annually. 
whatever you think is most appropriate to your situation. Step two means select, is select a moment. And in this step, you want to get precise about the specific moment you're measuring. So that way you can measure the same moment from assessment to assessment. So you might measure yourself right now, how you're feeling this instant. It might be how you're generally feeling today. It might be how you've been feeling over the past week or over the past month. It can be whatever works for you, but it's important to measure the same thing each time. So step three is to complete the assessment. And that just simply means filling in your PANAS questionnaire, scoring yourself from one to five for each item as we've just looked at. And the final step is to calculate and compare. So add up your total positive effect score and your total negative score. And that's gonna leave you with two numbers, one for positive effect and one for negative effect. So you'll be able to see immediately whether your positive effect is higher than your negative number. And that will tell you whether you deal with the problems that life throws at you in a generally more positive way or a generally more negative way. Now, the real power of the model comes from tracking your numbers over time. You do this to ensure that your trends are going in the right direction over time, and if not, to take corrective action immediately. Now, often PANAS enables you to identify the direction of travel of your moods early, so you can take corrective action before they become more serious. So let's take a look at a really simple, a little bit contrived example, but imagine this scenario. You have a new job as a team leader and you want to know how your new team is feeling while they're working on a new multi-year project. So you ask each team member to participate in doing the PANAS questionnaire each month. Now, if you took a couple of snapshots in time, maybe three months apart, you might see one of several results. You might see the scores are the same. So your team is feeling exactly the same as before. You might see negativity increase. If you see this, you'll want to understand why. And the third possi possibility is that you might see positivity increase, in which case everything's good and you've got nothing to worry about. But for this example, we discover that negative effect is increasing. And when we dig a little bit deeper, we find that this is caused by a single person dragging down the overall team score. And what we then decide to do is go deeper, have a meeting with this person to discuss the trend and discover, you know, what's causing this change. And suppose in this example, we find that it's a change in the day-to-day -day work they're performing which they don't find as enjoyable. So one option might be to work with them to identify a compromise solution where maybe they do less of that type of job and more of another type of task they prefer or find more interesting. And by doing this, you know, you're going to address the deteriorating trend and stop this issue before it becomes a large problem. Now, there are a number of advantages and disadvantages to the PANAS scale. And in terms of advantages, you know, the questionnaire is easy to understand and easy to use. You can very quickly understand your overall mood in a matter of minutes. Uh, secondly, it can be used to track changes over time. And that can help you, as we've just said, find and understand issues impacting your mood early before they become a more serious problem. Now, in terms of disadvantages, well, the questionnaire is a subjective self-reported measure. So accuracy depends on your own self-awareness of yourself. You may not be aware of how you feel. And another disadvantage is that your results may vary from day to day or even hour to hour, depending on your mood at the moment you complete the questionnaire. So if you're feeling low when you complete panas, you'll tend to overstate the negative. And conversely, if you're feeling amazing, you'll tend to overstate the positive. So in summary, the positive and negative effect schedule is a 20 item self-reported measure of positive and negative effect developed in 1988 by three American psychologists. 
Each item is rated on a five point scale and the positive and negative items are separately tallied to provide an overall picture of your mood or feelings. Now, generating awareness of your mood can lead to insights into your behavior. And with this increased awareness, you can correct negative trends before they become serious. Now, generally we can say that people with a more positive mood are generally able to handle the challenges that life throws at them in a more positive way than those people with a higher negative effect score. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.